Aujourd'hui, uh, je vais parler de what one of those traditional personal finance gurus yapping about things that they clearly are too senile to understand. Yes, that is what I'm calling Susie Orman due to her inane opinions about how much is needed for early retirement, but really, it's more like her opinion on how much is needed for any kind of retirement, okay? Mm. Hey, I'm the Sunpuck here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell by now, but I really have a real disdain for traditional personal finance gurus, or really just about anybody, uh, you know. Uh, talking about re retirement on the mainstream media, uh, when they themselves have not retired. Uh, in that group definitely stands people like Susie Orman, right? I mean, to be honest, I don't have a problem with her general shtick, uh, for the majority of Americans anyway. That goes down to this, right? For most people, uh, no, you cannot afford whatever expensive lifestyle inflating toy you want. Don't buy it. Wow. Sounds really refreshing in a world of rampant consumerism, doesn't it? I guess. But it is reasonable advice for the group of people that it's aimed for, i.e. people with highly leveraged lifestyles and are, uh, are living paycheck to paycheck. But what I do have a problem with is when Susie Orman starts commenting on the fire movement, okay? I'm gonna link the article I'm talking about referencing below, but I'll quickly summarize, okay? Mostly, he, uh, she doesn't think that someone's responsible to fire with a $2 million portfolio because over time, according to her, 80K a year is pennies. Uh, that catastrophe will burn all that up. She also notes that, you know, at least five to 10 million as the safe number to retire without specifying at what age exactly. And the type of emergencies, by the way, that she wants people to cushion for includes healthcare, okay, that's reasonable, or family support needs, which according to the article, could equate to hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. Oh boy, what a treasure trove of things to respond to. I'm just gonna, you know, rip into this, okay, almost immediately. So, by the way, for context, a quick Google search tells me that Susie Orman at age 73 is worth around 75 billion. So, phew, glad she's able to retire at least, but, but I mean, is she actually retired though when she's still opening her mouth? All right, anyway, if you're intrigued by what I might say, please subscribe, like, comment, and share, and all that social media nonsense, or whatever, okay, because I am rich enough for me, and I'll be great regardless. So my first note is simple, right? Whenever legacy, aka actual senior commentators like Orman or Dave Ramsey talk about early retirees, they always seem to forget what type of people have gotten to these multi-million dollar portfolios in the first, first place, right? Like I always like to emphasize in my videos, FIRE is really more about mentality and the will to control life, uh, lifestyle inflation in general more than any other skill, right? So let's Talk about this imagined person who has a 2 million portfolio in their 40s and 50s, perhaps, so well ahead of regular retirees by a decade or two, okay? If this person or household can accumulate $2 million 20 years ahead of what a normal person can, I mean, any rudimentary research will show that the vast majority of Americans at regular retirement age do not have a single, much less $2 million. So if a fire person or household can accumulate, uh, can, can accumulate this amount in 20 years, 20 years early, okay? Let's assume some catastrophe does happen that's so un unexpected that it wasn't accounted for in terms of the fire adherence money calculation, right? Why is it that people like Orman doesn't assume the fire person can then just adapt to these new circumstances? I mean, just because someone's fire doesn't mean that they died and must or cannot ever work again, okay? They're not disabled, for God's sake. Think about who's more likely to be able to overcome catastrophic type of circumstances, right? Someone who has never gotten out of the living uh, paycheck to paycheck world, or someone who's already demonstrated the mental discipline to accumulate actual wealth well ahead of time, okay? My money's on the people who's remotely got a fire mentality, okay? There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. Uh, now I have to also mention specifically for Susie how completely out of touch she is if she thinks that anyone needs to budget uh, extra, by the way, for hundreds of thousands of dollars in recurring annual costs for things like family support needs. What the heck is she talking about? Seriously, maybe because she's worth $75 million, that she's paying for the nursing homes of all of her parental generation people? 
I mean, not knocking on that, okay? Uh, if you can afford to do that and are willing to, that's awesome, good for her. But I'm talking about a normal person or a household's budget here, okay? Ignoring the fire pit for, for one second, uh, but who the heck do you know? I mean you, because I certainly don't know, right? In terms of financial planning, that slices up six-figure costs for other people with a family, okay? Am I assuming that I have family members who simply cannot stand on their own due to age or disability? Am I a professional basketball player who's expected to carry the, uh, his entire urban village for life? Do we not live in, a, in America, the richest country in the world, where presumably we have social safety nets in place for people who are infirm, disabled, or older? Now I get it. If I was very rich, like Roman, sure, I'd help if I can. But this cannot possibly be the standard expectation for old age or disability care, right? Especially in the Western world. I'm not even sure people in the regular old 1% will be able to budget out multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for this type of spending, okay? Even if they were still working, okay? forget, forget about retired. This is an absurd premise. The only people who can afford that would have to make like over a million dollars a year. And now we're cleanly into like C-suite level of people, okay? Yeah, which practically nobody is. Now finally, right? I think a lot of this, what Orman is saying, simply and clearly stems from the fact that if more people understood how to actually, you know, accumulate wealth, it jeopardizes how people like Orman makes their living, telling people how bad that they are at managing their money, right? Orman thinks 80K is not enough to sustain a household indefinitely. When in fact, that is more than what the median household uh, income in the United States right now, with, with, you know, household with jobs. She also mentions how 80K might be worth pennies in the future, again demonstrating her complete ignorance on how the 4% rule works because it adjusts for inflation every single year. But hey, her whole business is predicated on people who are dumb with money, so I get it. Maybe this fire response is just a knee-jerk reaction against, you know, the loss of her clientele, right? But of course the reality is much different, right? Fire people are few and far between, and for a hundred people who are interested, who knows what percentage will actually succeed. So Orman doesn't really have to worry about that, does she? I'm assuming she's not actually as bad as math as her ignorant take on the 4% rule would suggest, since she does have a pretty nice net worth and accumulation of wealth herself, right? So it's just selectively bad uh, to, to support her point. Got it, that's, that's what I get from it, right? Another reason not to trust people who are still writing about advices for money uh, unlike yours truly, right? Because I write this for fun, not for pay. <laughs> so, in conclusion, do you need five to $10 million to safely retire? Mm, absolutely not, okay? Just look up how much average income most retirees get, like regular retirees. It is way, way, way less than what five million can generate. And spoiler alert, it is less than 80K a year. Inflation adjusted, of course. Now, would it be nice to have a bigger cushion like Orman suggests? Sure, more money, more cushion, that's always nice, right? But do you have to wait until you have 75 million like Orman at more than 70 years old? I mean, she's still working and I've been retired for almost basically half a decade, right? Who's having a funner time though, right? I'd say me. And maybe that's just because I'm a simple dude who doesn't need to support a village's needs to the tunes of hundreds of thousands a year. Or maybe my family is just full of other simple folk who also live simply and minimally. Who knows? All I know on this topic is Susie Orman is totally off her rockers, okay? What do you guys think? Please comment below. Cheers. I'll approach it.